Nurses Union, BC Nurses Union Vice President. Good afternoon. I'd like to thank Camille and Alexis uh, for inviting the BC Nurses Union to make a few comments. It's an honor to be here at the BC Legislature with all of you. Woo! We love our nurses. <laughs> On behalf of the 48,000 licensed practical nurses, registered nurses, registered psychiatric nurses, and allied health workers represented by the British Columbia Nurses Union, we want to give a shout out to all the family doctors and acknowledge them on Family Physician Day, which is worldwide, at, it's recognized worldwide. Awesome. <laughs> I stand here as both an advocate and an ally. The BC Nurses Union urges government to take immediate steps to address the shortage of family doctors in this province. Awesome. We know that the health care system can only exist when there's enough of all of us to provide health care. As a registered nurse and someone who represents nurses, I know firsthand what it means for patients, our health care system, if the family doctor shortage is not addressed and the primary health crisis deepens. During a visit to Victoria General last week, I witnessed how bad the situation really is. Many sick people in the need of care waited for hours packed in a waiting room. Oh my God. Last month, I toured Royal Inland Hospital and the University Hospital of Northern British Columbia and visited both emergency rooms. What I saw was exhausted nurses and ER doctors spending their shift triaging and providing care to whoever they could, running from patient to oh, patient. Oh, it's horrible. Many looked defeated. Constant war zone. For those who work in healthcare every single day, it is devastating to watch the incredible toll a lack of family physicians is having on people's health. That's right. And the entire healthcare system. That's right. Without more doctors, people aren't getting the invaluable medical attention they need. Instead, they're having to travel to the nearest emergency room departments, often waiting eight, eight nine, and ten hours. Shame. The, the nurses and staff are worked off their feet trying to accommodate this harsh reality. When patients arrive at the hospital, they are sicker than ever, presenting with health issues that are complex because they have deteriorated over time. That's right. Why? Because they don't have access to a family physician and longitudinal care. Shame. And sometimes, tragically, a delayed diagnosis means it's just too late for there to be a meaningful medical intervention. Shame. Without family doctors, people have no other alternative but to go to the ER. This cycle is unsustainable and unacceptable. That's right. Our fragile health care system is crippling under the pressure of two major health emergencies, the pandemic and the toxic drug crisis. It will collapse if we don't have healthy health care teams. That's right. This means that there must be enough family doctors, enough nurses, enough nurse practitioners, respiratory therapists, lab technicians, care aides, the list goes on. It means access to walk-in clinics that don't fill up in 30 minutes or require people to line up for two hours before it opens just for the chance to get an appointment. It also means that urgent primary care centers function as they were intended to provide urgent and primary care, but they can't do that without doctors. That's right. It means accessible, timely health care for the 900,000 British Columbians who currently don't have a family doctor. Shame. Last week, during National Nurses Week, 
Hundreds of nurses traveled from communities large and small to rally in this very spot on the lawn of the legislature. Oh. Just like doctors, nurses have been watching the erosion of healthcare services in this province in horror, feeling frustrated, unheard, and disrespected. Shame. We stand with doctors today, and we know what happens when there are not enough of you. That's right. When I asked an ER nurse the other day what the shortage of family doctors looked like to her, she shared the following. It has become normal to see increasingly long wait times in the ER. Personally, I feel people are coming to see us with issues and concerns that could be better taken care of with their primary care physician, if they had one. Yeah, exactly. I asked another nurse the same question. Her response? Without primary care, I find that there's a lack of education within the public. I've seen patients present much too late with symptoms such as facial droops and slurred speech. Oh, I think if we had more physicians, patients would be more knowledgeable, knowledgeable and have a better understanding of how to treat certain things and when to worry and when to come and seek help. And another, with screening and primary care so difficult to access, I see patients young patients presenting to us and getting a new cancer diagnosis. I'm aware that also patients are receiving a diagnosis of metastatic cancer made by the ER doctors. I also see patients that have received other new diagnosis and they come to the emergency room for referral because they have nowhere else to go. Well, all of these are very valid health concerns, these patients should have a family doctor to support them and not have to rely on the ER. It is time. It is time for the people who work in this building behind me to wake up and listen to the province health care professionals. on the doorsteps until conditions have improved for everyone. Wait on. Enough is enough. We can't stand to watch patients suffer any longer. That's right. Premier Horrigan, Adrian Dix. Last week it was the nurses rallying. Today it's for the doctors. What will it take you to realize it's time to roll up your sleeves and get to work to ensure accessible primary health care for the citizens of this province? Thank you. Woo! Awesome.